versus shares of Riata Pharmaceuticals, it's up nearly, yeah, 90 percent, 90 percent this week after its drug for treating a rare neurological disorder was approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Earlier this week, we took a closer look at the challenges in treating rare diseases. So take a listen to Dr. Ola Bodimer of Boston Children's Hospital. This is still a long way to go. I think in my own experience, it's a mixed experience. Some patients come to attention very early due to the significance of the symptoms. Sometimes it takes um, still, in some cases, years until a diagnosis is finally made. Okay, so let's bring in now Warren Huff, the CEO of Riata Pharmaceuticals. We've also got Meg Terrell on set with us, our pharma reporter joining us here, expert on all things drugs and biotech. Uh, Warren, Meg, thank you both for being here. I, I, I guess maybe, Warren, if you take a look at the reasons why some of these types of companies like yours are getting so much attention, it is because of the binary nature sometimes, it seems, of the results of studies of drugs and the way that company stocks react. So how important is it for your business and your company to be able to put forth results like this? And is it a real stepping stone towards bigger things? Oh, it's, it's absolutely everything. You know, your, you know, the quality of your clinical data, um, how interpretable it is, you know, all of that is what leads to either the approval, you know, or a failure to get approved. And it drives everything. You know, we've worked on this platform for 15 years and we work specifically in Friedrich's Ataxia for over nine years now. And it all comes down to a, a single day event on your approval. And Warren, it's Meg Terrell. You know, your stock went down 30 percent the day before the approval. There was some nervousness around it. You've got the analyst notes coming out. Brian Scorney at Baird said, quote, we followed some pretty dramatic stories in the past, but the Riata Odyssey is in the Hall of Fame. 30 percent <laughs> drop, almost 200 percent rise on the approval. The comparison I'm seeing most of all to you now starting to market this is to Sarepta's Duchenne muscular dystrophy drug. And there, I wonder if you agree that's a fair comparison, but they did face some pushback from payers over the high price of that drug. And yours will be $370,000 a year before discounts. Are you expecting payer pushback? Actually, not really. Uh, we were very careful about the pricing here. We looked at uh, every ultra rare disease analog launched since 2016. We priced below the midpoint. Um, the published estimates of where we would price were meaningfully higher than where we priced. And so we were very careful to be fair to the payers uh, in setting the price. And we've also uh, instituted a Riata Reach program, uh, which is to, designed to provide access to every eligible patient uh, with, a, with either a nominal or no copay. You know, if I, if I could just kind of broaden this out a little bit, I mean, when it comes to the, the, the bigger picture here, and, and Meg, maybe this is a question for you, when it comes to like the rare disease type thing, orphan drugs, the, the ones that are, that are, they cost a lot because they have to make back the research and development costs over a smaller base of patients, potentially speaking. Mm. This has always been a controversial topic, but is there any way to really get beyond the economics that we see here? I mean, it costs a lot of money, right, to, to, to treat these diseases. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure Warren could speak to how long they've been working on this and how much money they had to invest in order to get to this point. And still, there's a road ahead toward you know, profitability and the real payoff here. The interesting thing about the orphan drug market is that, as Warren was saying, you often don't see as much pushback from the insurers because there are so few patients being covered. And so you do have those high drug price tags, uh, but they do get coverage. But since there has been that comparison to Sarepta, I was curious to know your answer on that, Warren. I'm also curious to know, you know, we, we heard from that doctor in the intro talking about the importance of getting diagnosed early, and you have approval for 16 and up, but what is the pathway to getting approval for, for kids? Because treating earlier in life would presumably be very important here, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, to, to go to the first part of your question about the Sarepta's drug for Duchenne's, of course, they're comparable because these are both, you know, terrible neuromuscular diseases, you know, with, with devastating outcomes for the patients. And at the time of their launch, you know, they had no approved therapy. So I think we fall in that category of basically the first, you know, approved drug for a devastating disease. And we're, we're thrilled about uh, what it means for the patients. Um, and so uh, I think that's the, you know, that's I think the most important takeaway here, and and I also completely agree that the uh, the issue with rare disease pricing is simply you have so few patients uh, to, to share the cost. 
but it doesn't impose a big burden on the system, again, because there are so few patients. Right. And, you know, now the path forward is manufacturing the drug, selling the drug, getting it to the patients. You did disclose on your conference call there was a bit of a manufacturing hiccup. How much of a problem do you anticipate that causing going forward? And at, at any point, you know, are, are you talking to potential acquirers or partners in bigger companies that may come in here and see uh, that they want to partner or even buy you uh, to help you sell this drug and to reap the rewards? Yeah, so, um, yes, to address the manufacturing issue, yes, we had a actually a pretty standard hiccup when you're doing your final commercial batches. We had a uh, impurity that had been observed, process related in prior batches, but it ticked above the reportable limit. And so that requires that we amend our specification for it. It adds 30 days basically to the launch. And so we feel it will have drug available in late May or at the latest, you know, early June. All right. That's Warren Huff, CEO of Riata Pharmaceuticals, thank you very much. Please come back and update us on your business developments. We'd really appreciate it. And, of course, our own Meg Terrell as well. Thanks for joining us in studio today.